fender gills, hemi shaker, and no top. A bright yellow and white 1970 Plymouth Cuda convertible, powered by the legendary 426 Hemi V8. Truly a fantasy machine for just about every red-blooded gearhead, Plymouth fan or not. Only 11 were built with the 426 Hemi, and it's important to note that just 374 1971 Cuda convertibles were produced in total, so they're pretty rare no matter what engine is under the hood. This combination of an angry Hemi in a summertime fun drop top Cuda might seem like a mismatch, but that's part of the mystique of these cars. The 71 Cuda was revised a tad with an updated grille featuring vertical slats and four headlights. Round fog lights mount below the painted bumper and the grille surround is argent silver. Hood pins keep the monster under wraps at high speed. This Hemi got the shaker hood scoop, which was painted argent silver. Four new gills were added to the fenders, adding a speedier look to the already slick Cuda design. The long slit-like fender marker lights are a cool touch, and out back, the Hemi Cuda received a new taillight design with a larger inboard reverse light amid a satin black rear panel, and the tight-fitting bumper sits above the twin exhaust tips poking through the lower valance panel. With the power top down, our 71 almost looks like a peeled banana with its lemon twist yellow exterior and white high back bucket seat interior. The dash is stuffed with the rally gauge package and the AM FM radio features the unusual optional tape recorder. This allowed you to record your favorite tunes off the radio or use the microphone to dictate your thoughts as you drop the hammer on 425 horsepower and 490 pound-feet of torque. 15 by 7 inch rally wheels spin the Goodyear Polyglass GTs into a smoky memory when the Hemi does its thing. And the driver can keep both hands on the wheel thanks to the 727 automatic 3-speed transmission. The Shaker Hood Scoop provides additional entertainment as it struggles to hang on to the dual quad 426 when the going gets tough. It's no surprise that Hemi Cuda convertibles are surrounded by stories, whether they're street racing myths or mind-blowing tales from the auction. In fact, some people blame this very car for starting the stratospheric rise in value that these cars enjoy today. Yeah, it's true that nearly every conversation about a Hemi Cuda convertible eventually turns to market values for these cars. This car reportedly sold in the 1980s for around $54,000, a sum that seems tiny today, but set a high standard for muscle cars at the time. And once that happened, all the other Hemi Cuda convertibles doubled or tripled in value right along with it. But this car proved that desirable muscle cars had significant monetary value as well as intrinsic and sentimental importance. Watch one roll across an auction block today and be prepared for seven-figure action, further validating the number 426 as a winner on the track and in the investment portfolio. But, of course, there are those who cry that the astronomical values of these cars have ruined the hobby for us regular Joes who could never get our working class mitts on one. And to that, I say, well, hogwash. I mean, let's consider the alternative. Where are all the 1981 Pontiac J2000s today? I'll tell you. They're in landfills. Those cars never achieved any sort of collector status or significant value, so they didn't survive. And there are no restoration parts or enthusiast media dedicated to them. I mean, they're just gone. On the other hand, the high demand and value of these cars ensures that they will never be discarded as old scrap metal 
which helps keep the interest level up for all classic and muscle cars. If there ever becomes a time when the popularity and value of cool muscle cars plummets, well then we're all in trouble. I'm always excited by more car TV shows, more events and auctions and whatnot, because it shows the interest and the marketability of our enthusiast cars remain strong. And that ensures that the parts manufacturers, the restoration shops, media outlets, and retailers all stay in business, and us regular Joes can continue to play with our own rides. Sure, I can't afford a Hemi Cuda, but without them, the lower level cars I can afford would have already been deemed worthless and have been recycled into replacement parts for shiny new hybrids. And that is not cool. Okay, rant over. While many people question the 426 in a convertible as a viable drag car, it's not as if all these cars were sold to go racing in the first place. And what's wrong with wanting a clear view of the sky as you blast to a tire-spinning low 13-second quarter mile time? Nothing, my friends. Nothing. If this car looks familiar, it might be because it was the inspiration for the CUDA convertible used in the Nash Bridges TV show. Well, now it can say it was on Muscle Car of the Week, too. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. What'd you say?